for many years, I was probably approached by two or three physicians a month who would like to do some work abroad. But most people who think they would like to do some work abroad really have no concept of what that would entail. The philosophical uh, perspective that has emerged for me over time is that uh, one can be most helpful if one develops some continuity. And continuity has to be based on trust and understanding. And uh, I don't think one can be effective without having a relationship of trust and understanding. The, the, um, one of the models that's used a lot in medicine in particular is to have a team go out and do a seminar. Uh, do a three-day or three-week uh, process and then move to another country and do a two, three-day or three-week process. I think most of those miss the mark because they don't understand where the students or the learners are coming from. They don't understand the context. The Minister of Health in Laos said to us one day, the many, many countries have teachers come to Laos and most of them leave and nothing changes. He said, Calgary comes to Laos and they come back and come back till they understand the situation. Well, I think medical tourism is, is what a lot of physicians who go abroad do. And they come and give a lecture, a lecture similar to one that they would give at home. It allows them to look like they're very knowledgeable and um, People here will be very gracious and will listen through it. But it isn't really helpful in the kind of projects we work on where you live your way into a fairly difficult environment uh, and, and learn to understand how to relate, how to speak, how to listen, and maybe, maybe if you're lucky, how to contribute. It took me many years to figure out how limited the resources were for students. I, I didn't pick up on that for a few years. Until you start to know the people, uh, you don't pick up on things like that. But once you start to understand what some of their true difficulties are, then you can discuss it and work towards a solution. But to come over and give a lecture and ask, oh, you know, are there questions? Um, you're not going to change anything. And the first time, the room not have don't have newspaper, so we we brought newspaper and tap it. Uh, it can empty sunshine <laughs> so the room will cold uh, more, more than, than the past and we have uh, fan. one fan and light so we together for five we have five friends together we are fine and we are close we are very close friends we can talk uh, anything that we uh, we can share anything from ourselves, we always share because we don't have a television, we don't have anything. So every night we talk together, we share our idea, we share our thinking. And now we very happy yes. <laughs> to live here. So my recommendation currently is, if you're willing to go for three to four weeks, not less, Stay on the ground during that time, not disappear to a recreational site. Pay your own way. And if at the end of that, you see something you'd like to do, you'll probably work out. People who are responsible for the running of our university tell me over and over that the folks who work out here are better teachers back home. But I think the most important part of working here is to look at what is the essence of improvement or the essence of, of contribution. And we relearn over and over that the relationships are more important than the techniques, that the people are more important.
than the institutions. And that working together creates enormous impact as well as enormous satisfaction. I think one of the biggest things we bring is encouragement. That's what we bring. The changes are internal and we are just trying to encourage and facilitate. Foreigners tend to become impatient and when they become impatient they tend to take over and when they take over they remove the sustainability and so we've tried very hard to uh, have interval activities incrementally but to leave the real hands-on work that needs to be done in the hands of our collaborators who are local whether that be in the rural villages or in in the university in the central areas and that's a very difficult skill we we really are eager to control and eager to manage and eager to to progress and so that takes patience and a, and a willingness to back off and uh, in the past the the curriculum of the Philippines is actually a grafted curriculum from, from the north. And I think that was understandable because we didn't have our own. We didn't know what to do at that time. And so to keep as a jump start, the forefathers decided let's just adopt an existing uh, curriculum. Unfortunately, this curriculum is very much um, Western-based, North, North, the Northern-based, uh, and so, um, in in, as a consequence of that, it was meant to really produce graduates that will serve, um, I would say, a Western need rather than uh, an Asian need, a local need, um, and it did not do us any good. So we decided to reverse that. So we decided to develop our own curriculum based on our own setting, our own needs. We wanted a curriculum that is culturally, uh, that is, uh, that is uh, sensitive to the cultural re realities of, of the region, uh, the economic realities of the region. And that was when we started to see uh, a big solution to our health and major health problems. So this is another project, again, of the students. And uh, if you will notice that, uh, actually mentioned by the local people earlier, a few hours ago the water was up to the knees uh, because it is high tide as of now. And so majority of the houses are in stilts. And this is a, another structure that was helped uh, built by the students, which is like a mini clinic that uh, during the four years of stay of the medical students, uh, they visit this, this uh, area here so that the people don't have to travel all the way to the uh, hospital, which is quite far. So uh, very accessible for the people. At the same time, we can see it's, it's a, a fisher folk integrated, sustainable and holistic uh, culture technology. So you can just imagine every year a batch of students between 30 to 40 students are placed in a community and they now solve the priority health problems of that community. And in the process, energize the people, empower them to become self-sustaining. We see now uh, there is now a decrease in the infant mortality rate. It used to be about 75 per thousand live births. But now, in the last 16 years, it has moved down to 8 to 10 per thousand light births. And that's a very significant drop on the infant mortality rate. When we work with colleagues at home, we're respectful of each other, usually. Um, and very often when you do international work, it's easy for groups to come in and feel they have the answers because they've got a more sophisticated or more technological uh, medical system. Um, and when we come in and say, we have the answer for you, um, that's to me just not the right approach. 
Um, it's working with people and helping them work through what are the answers for their needs uh, without us telling them what they are because we're really not in a position to do that. Disadvantaged people, and I think uh, it would be true in Canada and North America in a somewhat comparable way, but disadvantaged people very often don't have the background in hygiene or education or presenting their thoughts, expressing themselves, uh, or even the ability to take in new information and assimilate it. So very often they are, uh, in a way, they have a set of filters which modify the intake that they have. It's very common for us to say they don't want to try, or they're not interested, or they, they're not very clean. Uh, yet. These are products of their upbringing, products of their traditions, products to some extent of their resources. And, and until we understand that, it's very, it's very difficult for us to respect them as to who they are and where they are in life. Uh, an example, in many of the villages we go to have very poor water supplies. So the mother will use the water for bathing first and then for cooking because that way she can use it twice. If she uses it for cooking first, of course, there's no none left for bathing. Now, we would find that strange. That would be the kind interpretation. But when you realize that she had to carry the water two miles uphill, it's not so strange at all. Her, li her water supply is very limited. And when you start going through these experiences, one after the other, to find out to what solution do we owe this problem? Then you start to have more respect because they have solved the problem in a particular way that works within their context. One of my great experiences working abroad was to be up in a remote village and to see on a given day the nice white SUV of the foreign agency coming up for the vaccination program. Arriving at 10 o'clock, leaving by four, and missing most of the children. And they said, these people aren't interested. But if you stayed in the village, you would notice that the women had gone with the children to the rice field at six o'clock and didn't get home till evening. The reason the foreigner missed them was not disinterested at all. It was because they were working too hard to get food on the table. So unless you're willing to stay in the village overnight, you're not going to catch that population. The next day, the family planning SUV comes up. The next day, the leprosy SUV comes up. The next day, the tuberculosis SUV comes up. And finally, by Friday, probably the malaria SUV. And guess what? Every one of them comes with a separate vehicle, separate staff. None of them have stayed in the village, and none will have much impact. The progress report will say, this village is not very interested. So the issues of understanding the local context are absolutely fundamental to understanding why things are the way they are. And until you can accommodate that context, you can't be helpful. I think every time I come here, I leave with more than I feel I've given. Uh, you learn communication skills, cross-cultural skills, um, human skills. I hate the thought of um, having to say goodbye uh, for the last time, but you want to work yourself out of a job. Um, it's the healthy thing and uh, they've got capable people and uh, as you continue to feel that they, they are becoming more empowered, um, then progressively, yes, we will know that things are sustainable and we are, we are no longer needed. And I think that um, that's, that's the goal. I have a few pieces of advice that I've developed over time for people who want to do this kind of work. The first is if you're going to go, don't go to teach, go to learn. Leave your slides at home. 
If you need to do any kind of informational instruction, develop it after you know their context. What do they know and what do they have? The second thing is, if you feel impatient, go do something else. Make sure that when you leave, they feel encouraged and that you feel satisfied that you've related well.